And finally, new rule, if the Olsen twins can charge $55,000 for this handbag, they can't make their interns work for free. That's, that's right, the Olsons, whose company is worth a billion dollars, sell this bag made from the hides of other less successful child stars. <laughs> for 55 grand while they're being sued by 40 unpaid interns who are just trying to get minimum wage. Well, they'd also like their brother Hansel to be released from the fattening cage <laughs> in the house made of candy. Because they look like witches. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Olsons, but if you sell obscenely overpriced crap to status-obsessed suckers and stiff the children who help you, you're not America's little sweethearts anymore. Your apple. <laughs> now, I don't want to pick on the Olsons, but if these two aren't guilty of something, why do they always look like raccoons when you turn on the porch light? <laughs> of, co of course, the Olsons are really just a reflection of our post-greed-is-good world where outrageous income inequality is simply accepted, even by most of the people getting fucked by it. People who should be in the streets, or in unions, or at least in the voting booth, but are not. As usual, Americans just find it easier to adapt. And that's how we got what economists now call the sharing economy. We used to have stores that provided jobs, then commerce went online, now we just have apps. I know we're supposed to think that's cool to drive an Uber from your Airbnb to the assignment you found on Task Rabbit, <laughs> selling your ovaries, but <laughs> isn't the sharing economy really the desperate economy? Airbnb? You really think anybody really wants to have total strangers living in their apartment for a week? <laughs> oh look, someone else's pubes on my soap. <laughs> I'm living the dream. There are apps now that connect you with people who will buy your groceries or park your car, and on Etsy you can sell your handmade crafts without the middleman of a store. How liberating. You're basically this guy on Venice Beach now. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'm not planning on wearing these pants tomorrow, so if anyone needs pants but can't afford the long-term investment, head over to TrouserDeal.com. <laughs> trouser deal where you can rent my pants for just $5.95 a day. <laughs> so, <laughs> how did America spend 60 years fighting communism and end up in a barter economy on Craigslist? It's like being afraid of gluten and ending up eating cats and dogs. The Trumps of the world would like to blame it all on Mexico and China, but Actually, the soulless workers coming to take your job aren't being smuggled across the Rio Grande. They're being built in Palo Alto. And that's not counting the next big thing, driverless cars. Oh, I know, we already have that. It's called texting behind the wheel. <laughs> but no, I mean real driverless cars. <clears throat> but robots and cars didn't do this. We did it to ourselves, as usual, by worshiping greed from replacing people with robots to exploiting interns, from the slave labor we use overseas to the music everybody steals at home. We've all become so good at scheming, cheating, inventing, raiding, gouging, and just plain fucking each other that we woke up one day with this sharing economy where the one thing we're not sharing are the profits. Somehow they forgot to create an app for that. Hillary Clinton has a detailed plan for higher education, but what is the point if there are no jobs when you get out? What's the point of going to school, joining the frat, and learning the racist songs if, that's if all that's waiting for you is your parents' basement? Even, even Jeb Bush says, we're moving to a world where it's harder for people in poverty to move up. And his solution? Don't raise the minimum wage. 
Remember, when we say he's smart, we mean smart for a bush.